Hello everyone, it's Richard here. I thought it was about time I gave you an update on the BCN 3D Sigma printer that I've been playing with and experimenting with for about over the last six months. I did actually shoot a video update on the Sigma back in December, and that was like four months ago. The only reason why I didn't release that was mainly because I'd made quite a lot of changes and experimentation for my own reasons, my own purposes, uh, because that's the way I wanted to use the 3D printer. And I felt that BCN 3D were just still trying to get a footing into the market. And some of the changes I'd made may just distract people from the, the 3D printer. So the only reason why I didn't publish it was really just to let them give themselves a little bit more time to get people aware of the 3D printer that, that they've been developing for over the last year and a half and I saw the Sigma about a year ago initially um, so now they've actually got some distribution set up in the US and they've got Designbox 3D over in the US and they've also got Hawk 3D Proto in the UK that's just giving them a bit more of a hand in actually getting the printer into more people's hands doing some distribution and some local support so now it's a little bit more well known and actually you can buy a Sigma printer now when I was first testing it you couldn't you couldn't even actually get a hold of one it's probably a little bit more appropriate to give you a bit more of an update on the Sigma what I've been doing with it and to give you a bit of an idea of the journey I've gone on with it as well because us directly after this video I'll post my video from December where I go through some of the changes and upgrades that I made on that machine and I still use those changes and upgrades but I've actually gone full circle around using different slices so I spent a lot of time over a month developing profiles for slicer for the Sigma and I really couldn't get the performance I wanted it was really disappointing I couldn't get the 3D heads uh, the, dual three, the dual print heads working uh, well enough in Slicer and I did post-processing scripts, I wrote scripts, I used different plugins from different people and I did all sorts of things to try and make Slicer work really well with the Sigma but I was also always a little bit disappointed with some of the stringing and some of the post-processing just didn't work as you wanted and it just wasn't quite integrated well enough so I had to give up on that and I'm, I've not used Slicer on the Sigma since I also wasn't particularly keen on the Cura profiles that BCN had released. They work, but I haven't got enough control over everything I want to that I would have had in Slicer. So I ended up using Simplify 3D for the Sigma. And actually that's really great. I've got all the control I want and I've developed some profiles for that as well. Now this is where it comes a little bit complicated because the profiles I developed were for when I changed the Sigma printer quite dramatically with heads and I went to E3D V6 nozzles and away from the original BCN uh, Sigma hot ends. That was for a whole combination of reasons. A lot of it were experimenting with slicer and the retraction profiles and tool change and the sort of stops and starts you get with changing nozzles, retracting filament, filament getting jammed all sorts of other things. So I went around this great big long loop and actually ended up going back to the Sigma nozzles now finally with Simplify 3D and using slightly less aggressive tool change properties which is really good but that does mean I'm having to change all of my profiles back over again and actually it's back to the stock version of the Sigma which is great because then I can release them and other people can benefit as well which is what I've done. So I'll put a post to um, one of my first profiles I've released for the Sigma for Simplify 3D and let me know how you get on with it. I know that uh, Joel the 3D printing nerd has done a bit of an initial review on the Sigma that he got a few weeks ago and he's done a little bit of work on there and he's hoping to do some more work in the future as well testing and just seeing how he gets on with that. I'm still really excited about the Sigma and it's because it still has these two dual independent print heads and I think that really is the future for us in a lot of the desktop 3D printers, having the independent heads moving separately, being able to park, is still a really good thing. And it's something that can be built on. And that's why I'm still experimenting with the Sigma and still doing things with it. Uh, tool change becomes an interesting possibility. You can have the head that you're not using parked to one side. And while the other head is in use, 
The one that's parked could be refilling. If it was a paste extruder, it could be automatically filling. It could be changing over the nozzle. It could be doing all sorts of things. So having those two independent heads where they're not on the same carriage gives us all sorts of opportunities. And there's nothing particularly new about this. BCN 3D have produced this mechanism, but actually this was being done in the RepRap universe, the RepRap world, in 2011, 2012. Mendel Parts actually produced a machine with two independent extrusion heads back in 2000, 2012. So it, it's been done before, but it didn't really catch on. And now it's starting to come back around again. And the Sigma is a really nice machine that's implemented it very well. So you can produce some really nice things. I printed one of the nervous system tree frogs. And if you can print that on a, on a 3D printer without too much use, then you've got a good dual head system so I'm pretty happy with that. What I'll also do is put a link to the mounts I made for the Sigma for the E3D V6 nozzles because someone might find that useful uh, and I used them for four months while I was printing a lot of stuff uh, and it was great because I could also use all of the hardened nozzles for the E3D V6 and I printed pretty much every material you could imagine through the Sigma that was compatible with the Bowden system that they've got set up on that with those hardened nozzles. So it's really good. Uh, BCN 3D are producing some hardened nozzles in the correct size for their Sigma hot ends as well. So we will be able to upgrade those to hardened nozzles and print with various size nozzles and different materials in the future as well. So, but I've experimented with various things, just more from uh, an interest in the, the dual system setup of the independent extruders and what could be done with it. Okay, so that sort of gives you a bit of an idea of what I've done. What I'll do now is just show you the video that I took back in December, just so you can see a little bit more about what I've been doing with the printer. And I'll shoot another video at some point in the future to give you a more of an update on the sort of things that I've been printing. One thing I have been printing over the last uh, few days is this big model, which you can see is quite large and it's not finished yet. It's still got a few more modules to go. And there's actually going to be a little bit more of a project behind that as well. So that's an, an exciting one coming up and uh, stay tuned. You can see what I've done with the Sigma right after this. Hello everyone, it's Richard here, and this video is a bit of an update on how I'm getting on with the BCN 3D Sigma 3D printer. Okay, so I've had it a couple of months, it's now December, and I've been working and using the printer, and basically just testing, testing out different materials, uh, different speeds, different settings, different slicers, and trying to get the most out of it really, and seeing what it can and can't do. And I think now I'm at the understanding uh, how well this printer works and it does work very very well indeed and also what it uh, what some of its limitations are and in the in the previous video I did I've explained a few things about the 3d printer the Sigma 3d printer and it does have um, some limitations but it also has some very very good advantages for people who really just want to get on with 3d printing that said you can see I've clearly made some modifications to the printer and uh, I'll just go through those now just so you can understand why I've made these modifications. They may not be suitable for uh, you if you're thinking of buying this 3D printer or any other 3D printer but the way I work and the way I uh, want to use um, 3D printing is the reason why I've made some of these changes. So the first thing I've done really is to take the plastic spools from the bottom of the uh, machine which get fed in through a tube and into the extruder and up around into the Bowden tubes and down into the hot end. Now that system was perfectly fine, it did work and was okay but I found it a little bit difficult to swap the materials in and out and I do a lot of printing with different materials and different colours especially. No real, I don't really print the same colour or material more than a couple of times in a row before I'm switching colours, materials and types. So that was a little bit tricky. They have got a nice system in the Sigma, in the BCN 3D Sigma, to allow you to insert uh, by the press of a button and it also feeds the material through and then remove again and the material comes out. But even that process is a little bit laborious and it's actually very quick to, to do it by hand. The, the extruders have got a little clamp on them that you can just push with your 
your thumb and you can pull the material out as, soon, as long as your hot end is at, at temperature so you can pull the material clean out. So I was doing that more and more, struggling down inside the printer to pull these spools in and out and it can be a little tricky to get in and out sometimes when the bed's not, not all the way down or all the way up. And the biggest problem I found was actually the fact that I use a lot of different size spools and different size materials. So while the material from BCN 3D fits perfectly in there and they do actually provide you with one of these little hooks that holds the material on so it doesn't have any drag uh, and the spool goes nicely around. And I did actually make an even bigger one so I could fit larger. Um, this is a, a one kilogram roll from uh, Perusha uh, and it doesn't quite fit in the machine. It just about fits but it rubs and even with my new mount I made for the Sigma which does just fit um, it was still a little bit awkward to get it in and out so at that point I decided I was going to do something about it and move and uh, move the, uh, the the extruders and the whole feed system out of the inside of the 3D printer. The other thing is some of the larger spools here I've got some um, Faberdashery uh, Aurora filament which has been put, put, uh, wound around this this spool and that's one of the larger spools especially good for materials that come in coils that you can actually put on and then you've got these great big spools of ABS and uh, color fab sort of XT that you can get which are 2.2 kilograms and they won't fit inside the machine obviously so I needed some way of being able to mount those and use them so all I've done really is take the extruders from inside the machine extended the wires the wires go down the back, out of a vent hole, and up, up here through some cable wrap, spiral wrap, and they're mounted on a wooden frame. This is not particularly sophisticated. I uh, tried to make it look as nice as I possibly can, but it's, it's there and it's functional and it does the job. The 3D printed parts I've done to actually mount the spools, there's plastic 3D spool mounts, a little guide at the back here, and a few other bits that have been 3D printed. Everything else is just then uh, pushed onto the back of the frame and it holds the material and the extruders. So I've managed to shorten the Bowden tubes which is a very useful thing to do. The shorter the better, you get a little bit more control over the material. So, uh, so that's a, a little bit of an advantage of doing this. And the main thing is now that the extruders are up here, I can just hold them down and pull the material out and push the new material in. Makes it really easy to swap out material, swap out coils and generally just use the machine. It has one other interesting side effect that actually it's reduced the noise of the extrusion system down completely. These big extruders when they're bolted to the back, this is a monocoque aluminium frame, um, actually cause quite a lot of vibration and resonance and some noise. So moving them up to there, even on this wooden frame that's lightly just secured onto the, onto the sides of the machine, has made a big difference in the overall sound and noise that the, that the system makes when it's printing. Um, so all in all I'm pretty happy with it and it allows me to do a lot more 3D printing useful of using different materials and getting a lot more out of the printer. A few other changes I've made really so far uh, I've made a few changes to the, around the hot ends having cooling fans so it's got 360 degree cooling all around the part now bef before it really just had a slope that was just pushing the air straight down onto the printed part which was okay it did work but I prefer a more more 360 degree gentle cooling. Um, this is quite a high power fan at the front here so you can actually get a huge amount of volume of air pushing through to cool the parts if you need to. Uh, the other thing I did is put a little flap onto this side uh, here. This is just a little PTFE flap that actually stops the cooling fan of the hot end intruding onto the, the other extruder and I was finding some problems when I was doing dual printing that the cooling was actually warping and twisting up parts that I didn't want to, especially in sort of other materials, ABS and, and materials that, doesn't, that don't like so much air flowing over the top of them while they're printing. So that's really the main differences. I've been printing with lots of different materials and uh, using different heat beds as well. So the, the glass surface is still a, a great surface for PLA and lots of other materials. I've been using some build tack as well, so on a build tack sheet, on a flexi sheet as well, so it makes it a little bit easier to remove the parts afterwards because build tack can grip like mad. 
and um, some other coatings and things as well that I've been testing out. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the machine. It's going really well. Been doing a lot of printing with it, a lot of different uh, material experiments, and the new new extruder mounting system is really working well. So I'll, I'll come back uh, and give you another update on the Sigma 3D printer uh, soon, and um, hope you hope that was useful, and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.